Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Hello and welcome to Countryside here on Manx Radio. I'm Simon Clark And I'm Kiri Kermode. We take a look back at the Sunday of the Southern District Agricultural Show and also a preview for the Royal Manx with Young Farmers Secretary Hayley Crow. And I attended the 73rd Sulby Annual Horticultural Society Show. Well, we didn't get a chance to talk to everyone at the Southern District Agricultural Show, Kerry. We were there on the Saturday, that wonderful Supreme Championship with Jonathan Quine and his family uh, taking the honours there. And it was brings back great memories just hearing it back. Oh, it really yeah. does. What a great day. And um, I bet they were reeling all week from that success. And you know, chat to people around the countryside. And it's very well deserved to that family. Yeah, but uh, it continued on the Sunday. Uh, you were there on the Sunday and there was plenty more people to talk to. Despite the weather, there was a lot of people in attendance on the Sunday. And I popped into the Deffer Marquee and caught up with some of the food people there. Mark, you're here at the Deffer Tent with uh, Tears of Ramsey doing the butchery side with Isle of Man Meats. How has the weekend been for you guys? It's been really good, really good. Yesterday, uh, Saturday was very busy, really good Saturday. We sold, which I've never done before, and all the shows I've done, we've sold a thousand burgers yesterday. My uh, goodness, wow. So no, it's gone really well, really well. Very pleased. I love this show. I think it's great, this show. It's, uh, I do like doing this show because the people are so nice down here, so nice and friendly. And they, they come and look, and yes, and they, they do, they're good to spend as well. <laughs> well, that's the main side of it. But your, your cabinets, they've been an array of Manx produce. The lamb, it was a complete sellout yesterday as well. Yeah, sold out the lamb. Uh, Alan Crowley from Isle of Man Meats, unfortunately, for him, he had to go back to the meat <laughs> plant and get, get me two lambs because I did run out of lamb. Yeah. But I've been back to Ramsey this morning and picked more, more stuff and brought it through today. Today, the weather's not too good, but... It's been worthwhile doing, it's been worthwhile being here. A lot of farmers have been around today, this afternoon. You'll be chatting with them. I heard some of the conversations, some of the sirloin. It's really well marbled. Essential for eating quality? Oh, yes, yeah, got to be marbled. Got to be marbled. And all our steaks are at least four weeks old before we touch them, before we even try to bone them out, really. And does that make a difference? Oh, it makes a big difference, yeah. yeah. It's got to be left on the bone for that time as well. Yeah. Uh, a, lot of play, a, lot, a lot of people seem to think if you, if you vacuum pack something and leave it for three months, it'll be... It'll be, be even better, but vacuum packing something doesn't doesn't make any difference. So some of the traditional butchery methods are still definitely. Oh, without, uh, yeah, without a doubt, without yeah, a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we only we only sell Manx produce as well. We only sell Manx produce. Uh, I, I, mean, I don't know whether you can see here, but we, I never when I do the shows, I never use, I never bring gammon or chicken because it's not Manx. Uh, I don't cure me on gammon, unfortunately, because. Uh, I can't seem to get enough pork, which yeah. is a, f- a fact on the Isle of Man at the moment. It's nothing anybody can do about it at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and that's the reason why I don't do chicken and gammon at the shows, because everything I sell is predominantly Manx. Yeah. Okay. I see the burgers and the sausages have been flying out all afternoon. What's your favourite out of, of all of the meat products that you sell? All the meat products that we sell, I do like a good sausage. I like it, but I like the plain beef sausage. Right, yeah, OK. I and like the ones you've got here today, they're, they're pork sausages? Just the plain pork. But yeah. I've only bought the plain pork ones because the pork ones are the most popular. Right. Yeah, yeah, most popular by far. Yeah. The nice big thick ones are more popular. Ali, you're here on behalf of Day's Delicious Dogs. It's maybe not the, quite the conditions of America, but what a great show it is, the Southern District. It's been a great show, but it's actually nice to see the morale within this tent alone. Even though it's raining, we're all yeah. full of high spirits still. This is it. And you guys, you champion Manx products. And, and Defer Tent is a perfect place to do that. It certainly is, even though we're classed as an American <laughs> company. <laughs> but yes, we promote Manx products as often as much as we can yeah. within our restaurant as well that's in Ramsey. The restaurant in Ramsey, you've got outlets everywhere. They can buy these products now online too. It's gone from strength to strength, hasn't it? It certainly has. You can get them online at davesdeliciousdogs.im or um, through you can order through Facebook, things like that. But yeah, it's, um, as you say, it's gone strength to strength and it's great. And what is it like having a restaurant? You know, it, you're out and about in the lovely silver van, which is it's so eye-catching on the show fields, but to have an actual proper base... Catering's hard work no matter what. People don't realise how much work actually goes into these shows. It's like a two, sometimes three day setup, and then like today, it's rained all day, so it's like not been worthwhile for anybody. But yeah, it's all about this Defa tent, it's all about promoting your company, promoting Manx, and letting the people from the Isle of Man know 
what great products is actually in the market. Tracy, yet another couple of busy days here at Southern District with Close Lease. How has it been for you guys? Oh, it's been absolutely fabulous finding um, some of our customers again um, and promoting our new shop and cafe as well up in St John's. And how has that been? It looks really, really wonderful on social media. Oh, uh, yeah, it's been great. Um, people are really embracing the whole idea of Manx and local produce. And it must be great for you as a, a farmer as well. Your own livestock going into your own restaurant. How does that feel? Yeah, it's a real farm to fork experience. So people can see that the pigs are running around in the fields opposite um, and then taste the fantastic meats as well. And uh, we use our own meats and other farm meats as well from our, our neighbours and friends. So how, how do you keep coming up with your new range of products? Because it is forever changing. Well, we never stand still on the farm. We've always got something new that we've, uh, we're inventing or we're, we're trying new recipes. So it's, it's always a, a, an involving um, concept. So are you the chief taster as well as everything else? <laughs> yeah, I am the chief critic. So uh, it has to get past me before it goes on the restaurant menu. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a shame the last day at the Southern Agriculture is chucked it down. Has it altered the, the whole environment around here? Um, we've still, uh, we, we're Manx, aren't we? We, we, we get, come out in the rain and people have still come out. There's families around, there's uh, lots of dog walkers and people are still enjoying the atmosphere and they've still got uh, plenty of produce to, to buy and there's still things going on in the ring. So yeah. Um, yeah. It's, you know, there's plenty to do even in the rain. Yeah, this is it. And any more plans for this year? Watch this space. There's always something new. Uh, we've just launched our Sunday roast um, starting today, so we've got a Sunday roast going every week. We have our barbecues with our own uh, our own meats and balakelli meats as well. Um, yeah, there's there's loads of plans in the offing. Have you got time to even take a minute? <laughs> A minute, and we haven't got a time to take a second, so uh, we keep going. It's always good for business to have that enthusiasm because you know it's only what you put into it, isn't it, really? Absolutely, and I think you know our, our customers are asking for more and more things. We've got uh, more and more recipe ideas, so we'll be always trying something. And it and it's yeah, what you put in, you get out. And you're still enjoying it here on the Isle of Man. Absolutely, even when it's raining. Andrew Lees, yet another great event at the Southern District Agricultural Show and in the DEFA tent. It's always busy. How's it been this time? Ah, it's been brilliant. Um, Saturday, I mean, a lot of the uh, food trailers have done really well. Um, there's a lot of support for Manx Foods, which is great, and there's uh, a lot of support for sort of Manx Agriculture as well. The number of people that are coming down all the time. Um, so a fantastic day. Sunday, oh well... <laughs> It's raining, there's nothing much you can do about that one. <laughs> but you've still got the te- your tents, still got people coming in. So, I mean, it's great to see people coming down, looking what the agricultural sector are actually doing to actually uh, help the islands and actually you know, all the food producers in terms of what they're actually producing, which is local Manx food. This is it. And now you've got a new position, head of agriculture and land. Um, how do you feel in your new position? You know, is this something you're going to carry on with? Because obviously you've been heavily involved with the food strategies. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important that we continue supporting the Southern Show and the Royal Show and, of course, the Food Festival. You know, the the agricultural sector is very, very important um, to to, to the Manx landscape. And I think um, I'd love to see these continue and get bigger and bigger and better and better. I mean, the the Southern Show tent, it's it's a lot bigger. We've got a lot of stuff down, even down from the sawmill, so from from our plantations, etc., but I think, yeah, long may it continue. It's, 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 a, it's a great event and it's, uh, it's, to me it's the beginning of summer when you actually uh, turn up to the Southern Agricultural Sub. That was Mark Matthews from the Tears Butchers of Ramsey, Alison Kane from Dave's Delicious Dogs, Tracy Ridgway from Close Lease in Patrick and Andrew Lees from Defer. Well, also on display at the Southern Show on the Saturday, which I didn't get time to play on last week's programme, was a wonderful display of uh, old vintage machinery that was there, some wagons, the steam traction engine and everything like that. And in charge of it was Chris Wedgwood. And I put it to Chris that he's displayed some of these vintage machines in the past, but it was a little bit different this time. It's probably the first time I've got three vehicles together at the same time. We've, we have, over the years, brought... Um, vehicles down uh, last year we had um, two here but I'm, I don't know if you remember but the weather was terrible and yes. we had tents blowing away all over the place but uh, we do like to support this show it's a very good friendly show and um, uh, great turnout today now the vehicles you've got here today you've got the, uh, the the traction the steam traction engine I think there's a steam wagon there and uh, the old one mighty parked up at uh, 
done up in the uh, Laxey flour mill livery. Yeah, well, this was theirs from new. This was actually um, it's a Foden S20, um, 1959, and it was brand new to the flour mills in Laxey. And um, the first wagon on the Isle of Man with air brakes, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, mm. and it's quite strange that the air is not fail safe. So if you run put, out of air, you've had well, it. Well, even worse than that, if you start the engine and drive off without letting the air build up, you just don't have any brakes. It's uh, yeah, <laughs> they haven't quite thought it out. Do you have a big sign in the cab reminding you to do that nowadays? Well, there's a bend on the bumper that was put in there the first week it was new by one of the lads at Laxing. We've left it in there because it's part of its history, really. But yeah. yeah. Well, what about the, the steam wagon there? That's a pick of age on that one, isn't it? Um, yeah, not as old as the traction engine, but it's uh, 1934. It's obviously um, in the livery of um, the Douglas Gas Works. Um, they had two identical wagons like that. Um, this wasn't actually one of theirs, but when we moved to the Isle of Man and... 94 we thought it'd be quite nice to do it in a, a local scheme and that's why we put the number three on the cab because they actually only had two so this is uh, the, third, the third, third one yeah. generation and yeah. the traction engine that's 197 so that's uh, 111 years old oh, so um, there for the first tt race was it <laughs> well actually it was exported new to um sydney in australia and it actually came back from australia almost well exactly 100 years later 2007 and uh, then it's been through restoration, and uh, there you see it today. Well, you can just see it. It's beautiful to actually see the restoration. and It's turning away there, the steam coming out of the top. You can't even hear it, can you? No, there's quite a lot of hours in the workshop to make it that silent, but it's quite satisfying when it's there. It's sort of uh, quite calming, isn't it? Yeah. And have you had a lot of people coming up and, and asking you about the history of them? Yeah, yeah, and... Um, People are obviously fascinated by early machinery, and uh, one of the great, uh, great fans, of course, is Derry Kissick. Um, he remembers uh, the Foden uh, um, call its wagon, and of course, he remembers the original uh, Sentinels with the gasworks. And I've actually got um, another Foden that was call its um, in Laxey, but I've not finished restoring that. I think I need a few more hours in the days. Yeah, and what's uh, sitting on the back of this one? This is actually the um, bogey for um, Tram 21 for the MER. Right. Um, this is my, my day job as an engineer, and we've just about finished refurbishing um, both bogies to go back into that tram very shortly. So a lot, a lot of important work, and uh, not quite machinery that you can nip in between two hands. No, um, you can see the length of that, and um, that, that's been in one machine you know so eight foot bed it's some fairly big machinery but it's you know I, I love the heritage engineering it's my sort of background and I'm so privileged that I've been able to work with um, the staff at the MER and uh, in, in, in indeed the mountain railway as well and to a lesser extent the steam railway at the moment and we've worked together very well and come up with solutions and keep everything working. And this is, is so important um, to a lot of people in the Isle of Man, um, keeping and restoring that heritage that we've got, isn't it? Obviously, I'm a bit biased because I obviously love heritage, but um, I think it's one of the great things the Isle of Man's got to offer, you know, in the modern world where things are so uh, mad and, and busy, you know, to be able to step back in time. And I think from a holiday point of view, it's very good, you know, for families and for some reason, the British just love our heritage, don't they? And, and, you know, we've got such a strong heritage on the Isle of Man. I think, personally, I think it's just great that we make the most of it. Yeah, well, it's great to see them on show here, and uh, well done on the condition that they've been displayed at this weekend. Thank you very much. Well, Chris Wedgwood there telling me a little bit about a history about uh, some of them uh, old wagons and uh, traction engines that they had on display at the Southern District Agricultural Show and uh, gleaming and steaming. <laughs> they really were, but it did stop people in their tracks as they were walking around the main ring. And what shine and pristine care has been taken to that machinery. But it was lovely to see, Simon, the little old tractors and then the big modern new tractors coming in behind them with a display of how the machinery works. And, and I think it really did uh, strike a chord with people to see the difference in, you know, in that technology and agriculture over the, the last 50 years. Yeah, and some of the modern people, of course, wouldn't remember some of them old ones without cabs or <laughs> brakes or anything on them, really. But they, they did their job, didn't they? They really did. <laughs> Thank you.
You're listening to Countryside here on Manx Radio with Kiri Kermod and myself, Simon Clark. Well, I popped along to Sulby, a very popular Sulby Horticultural Society's annual show was taking place in uh, the hall on the Clannock Road in Sulby, and lots of fantastic array of exhibits as usual. And I caught up with the secretary of the society, Kirsty Martin. Uh, another successful show, the 73rd, and you're still uh, running this. I know, you'd think I'd be uh, in need of a hairdresser's appointment mm-hmm. today, Simon. But it looks as though it's been it's been a lovely day out, it's warm in here. Um, how has it been, as, as many people as normal? Um, yes, I think we've been really lucky again, Simon. The uh, sun does always seem to shine on Sulby, and particularly on this day for us, so we're very lucky. Um, lots of people through the doors this afternoon, and you're right, it is incredibly warm in the show hall this afternoon, but there's a lot of people in here, which is wonderful to see. There's always a lovely presentation in this show. It's just a nice size, isn't it? The way it's laid out, and of course you've got the the separate rooms for the photography and the crafts and the the marquee outside. Yes, um, we always make sure there's places for people to come and sit, so the marquee where you can take a nice cup of tea and a piece of cake. Um, And yes, our exhibitors are incredibly important. Um, This year we are almost at maximum capacity, so we have... I have to admit, we have struggled to fit everything in. Um, you mentioned photography and soft handicrafts. They are some of our growing um, classes, so it's it's really great to see that handicraft work and different entries. It makes us a different show, um, which makes it extra special. Um, we've got about 30 more entries than last year, so this year our entry total is 1,195. Wow. So, uh, yeah, that's quite a few. <laughs> Well, how, well, what, what makes people want to exhibit in the, in the, in the, in the Sulby Horticulture Show? I think we work incredibly hard on social media. We have a couple that have joined the committee this year, Martin and Mary Phillips. I hope they don't mind me mentioning them. Um, they've taken over our social media presence. Um, we have a wonderful printer on board, Julie Katina, um, Moving Clouds Media. She helps us with our schedule and helps us with our posters. So we have colourful posters. Um, we advertise. Uh, we've got some great support in terms of sponsors this year to help us promote the show. And um, the school, Sulby School, Jib, school have been fantastic the local nursery butterflies and um, they're all on board they all want to support this little community village event um, and having the children's exhibits especially is incredibly important to us because that's the future of our show and you look at some of the uh, the more mature people who are showing now they are people who were showing in this show probably 73 years ago when it began not all of them <laughs> um, we've probably got a few people here that maybe were around in the beginning I know um, as a child I exhibited at this show so um, I have an emotional connection to it and to see kids coming in there's um, usually a, a tribe of children following me on show the afternoon because they're wanting their winnings um, I remember those feelings as a little child um, I know it's not all about that um, but that level of competition that level of inclusion everybody's participating it's it's a really lovely thing to be part of. You're not going to become a millionaire by winning one of the prizes, but it, it is such an honour when, when people do see their first prize rosette by their by their exhibit, isn't it? Yeah, I love um, the feeling when people come in on the Friday evening and the Saturday morning with their exhibits, especially brand new novice exhibitors. We're, we're a friendly show, we're not RHS. Um, we do things very sensibly, we don't, we don't sort of... Um, yeah, we do things sensibly, um, but it's about people having a go and coming along for the experience and coming along to see what's involved. But that is part and parcel of it. If you, if you, if you put something in the exhibit, no matter if you put, brought yours in and then you see one alongside of you going, oh, listen, I'm going to take mine away, but they don't do that, do they? No. That, that's, that's what they portray it as, and that's what they... And everyone else sort of admires what they've done. Yeah, it's about participating, um, and we're in- incredibly supportive of new exhibitors. When they come in, we always make sure there's a committee member here, and we expl- we get them paired up with, especially brand new people, get them paired up with a committee member, and they show them how to exhibit their item. Um, and it's very simple. It's card entry card face down, and your exhibit on top. But a lot of people are very nervous about it, and I think the bigger shows, um, I mean, what we try to do is promote their entry here, and then encourage them to have a go at other shows. Yeah. So the Royal is next week, the Southern was last week, um, Ramsey will be coming up very soon. So we try to promote it um, and get them to go into the other smaller shows too. 
and of course uh, you get to see all the exhibits coming in but you don't pick or your committee don't pick the prize you have judges for that so it must be nice to to have your own opinions about it and then actually see what the judges think yes and no two judges are the same um, it's great we have 15 anonymous judges um, different judges every year um, and we make sure that their identity remains anonymous so um, some people feel a little bit of pressure um, making the decisions especially around junior crafts and junior exhibitors um, but it's it's really part of the show and we need we need valuable people like that and there are people like that in our community um, who are prepared to do up, give up their time and come and do that for us so that's really good Teresa Shaman, congratulations. You've scooped the uh, the big prize at the Solby Horticultural Show. Well done. Thank you very much, yes. I... And it's uh, a, a different one this year. What have you won with? Um, I've won with my onions. Really? Yes, I know my onions. <laughs> <laughs> and well, how many, what's the sort of um, criteria for the onion uh, class? It's three good quality onions. and yeah. um, It's the judge's decision that's final and... Um, I think the show opener, who was Claire Christian, she chooses the best in show out of all the prize winners. That yeah, the, well, there's such a, a, a amount of categories, isn't there, from photography to craftwork, mm. tapestries, uh, flowers, and of course the vegetables. And I suppose uh, you know it m- must have been a great. Um, was it a surprise that the onions won? It was a shock. <laughs> It was, it was more of a shock, but um, there is a great variety. And over the years, I, I believe a cabbage has won the supreme prize, and there's been needlework. So it, 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 over the years, it does vary. It, yeah. It's a great variety. And what was the secret of your onions this year? Talent. <laughs> <laughs> was it the good weather for onions, or do you have to grow them inside? Or No, 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 the, the ordinary onions, because we've got an allotment, so yeah. we are fairly self-sufficient in vegetables anyway, and I come from a horticultural market gardening background. So, Did you think they were the best exhibit you had in? Because obviously you must have other items in. Um, uh, to be quite honest, no, they weren't. I didn't even know they'd won... The best in show. <laughs> right. So I, I knew they'd won the first prize for the onion class, but I didn't know they'd won the best in, best in show, so it came as a bit of a shock. <laughs> Many congratulations on uh, com- coming away with the best in show at Solby here today. OK, thanks very much. Teresa Shaman, who was the best in show with a group of three onions at the Solby District Horticultural Society show, and before that, the secretary of the society, Kirsty Martin. And did you have an entry in, Simon? No, I did not, but I have in the past, and I might have a stab at it next year. We've got our vegetable patch up and running now, so uh, you never know on next year's one. This is it. But it is great to see the children getting involved, Simon. I particularly like the vegetables, where they make them all into other little animals. You know, they have a cucumber made into a shark, or they have... All the little fruits and different things, it gets them involved with shows like that, which is essential for the future of it, isn't it? It But it's the opportunities that are there. Yeah, and it was great. Uh, And there was lots, uh, as Kirsty said, involvement from the Solby schools, Jervy schools and all of that. So uh, long may that continue. It's going to be the future of it. Um, Lastly on this week's programme, Kiri, uh, looking ahead to the Royal Manx next week and uh, some... Information from the Young Farmers. The Young Farmers is a big organisation here on the Isle of Man and they always try and attend uh, the two shows. And and at the Southern District there, they had cake making competition and the icing and and boys getting involved with it. It's really, really good fun and a laugh. And I caught up with Hayley Crow, the Secretary of the Federation of Young Farmers, to see what they had in the pipeline for the Royal Manx. Well, this year we've got a completely new approach. We've spent quite a bit of time with our Assistant Secretary, Brian O'Neill, who is absolutely amazing. She's come up with some brand new branding for the Isle of Man Young Farmers. You'll see it on our Facebook and Instagram pages, but our big launch is here at the show. Um, so you should... I think in the past people have probably said it would be fair comment to say that they, they couldn't really find us before, fair but enough, yeah. people will have no problem finding us this, this year. <laughs> Just as good a look, absolutely brilliant. Well, that is really good for the general public to come along and get involved, because I know you've got lots of events on as well as the new look. We have, yeah. Um, the first thing, which is quite different from other years, is that we've got a real push on memberships at the Royal Manx Show. We want to have membership sign-up day so kind of the thought behind it is when you go off to university and um, there's freshers week and you sign yourself up for anything we want people to use the show as that sign-up point 
um, if they've never even heard of us before, we want to give them the opportunity to sign up there and then capture their details. Not to say, oh, come along to an event and you can find out about us then yeah. because you know that's where we're losing potential new members. We want to be able to capture that information um, on the day, basically, yeah. so that then we can encourage people to come to members, uh, come to events whenever possible, really. But the, only th- the other thing is, Hayley, it, it says young farmers. Like, this isn't the statement anymore. It isn't about farming. It's about so, so much more. It really is. Um, Young farmers, in the name, you know, it sounds like you've got to be involved as a farmer or in the farming community, and that's really not the truth. Uh, You couldn't be further from the truth, really. If you looked at what our membership split was, there's probably only about... 35-40% which are from farming stock if you like, the rest is we've got a diverse membership and we really want to encourage people that you really don't have to have anything to do with farming at all, there's so many events on through the course of the year, it's basically like a social club just that's our name and as far as you say social club goes sporting activities as well and I believe there's a very big sporting activity here at the show there is a brand new one for 2019 Um, we have got the Isle of Man World Championship wheelbarrow racing (laughs) so our vision is basically like it will be like the Tim Bath races but at the Royal Mank show in a wheelbarrow the idea is that you get a team of two and a wheelbarrow and feel free to decorate your wheelbarrow however you see fit and then enter the race and um, hopefully win a prize. That was Hayley Crow, the Secretary of the Federation of Young Farmers. Well, uh, that's just about it for this week's Countryside. Next week we'll be at the Royal Manx Society's Agricultural Show at Nokalo Farm in Patrick to give you live uh, coverage throughout the Saturday afternoon and we'll be there live to bring the supreme champion of that as well. So join us for that on next week's programme and then we'll look back on the show in uh, the, the following countryside. So, until next week, from me, Simon Clark, and me, Kiri Kermode, we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.